Part 2 will cover inspection requirements to include the basics of visual inspections, non-destructive inspections, NDI, and daily in-depth and special corrosion inspections. Good corrosion prevention and control practices start with thorough, regularly scheduled corrosion inspections. Detecting and treating corrosion early reduces costs, out-of-service time, and the possibility of corrosion-related accidents. Corrosion inspection is a continuing requirement and needs to be done daily. You should start all inspections with a thoroughly cleaned aircraft. Some of the inspection tools you will need are a good flashlight, an inspection mirror, a 5 to 10 power magnifying glass, a plastic scraper, and a felt tip marker to mark corroded areas. If you are going to do a good job inspecting your aircraft, you need to be able to recognize materials, proper coating, and damage which could lead to corrosion. This section is devoted to common aircraft metals, coatings, and their corrosion products. The primary metal used in manufacturing aircraft skin is aluminum alloy sheeting called alclad, or simply clad. Although clad is highly resistant to corrosion, pitting can occur if inspection and routine maintenance are not performed. Other metals commonly used in aircraft construction require special preventive measures to protect them from corrosion. The information which follows summarizes Table 3-1 of your AC43-4A. Magnesium is the most chemically active metal used in aircraft construction and is highly susceptible to pitting. Corrosion on magnesium initially appears as white spots on the metal, and with time, these spots can develop into white powdery mounds of corrosion product. Magnesium always requires a protective coating. It is usually painted and protected by either chemical conversion or electrolytic processes. Low alloy steels are vulnerable to surface oxidation, pitting, and intergranular corrosion. The reddish brown product which is formed is rust, something which is easy to recognize. When corrosion attacks stainless steel, the surface darkens and becomes rough. Corrosive environments and industrial pollutants will cause corrosion on stainless. Several metals are used to plate steels used in aircraft construction. Cadmium, for example, is a sacrificial coating. It corrodes, so the metal underneath doesn't. Cadmium is used to coat steel parts and to provide a compatible surface when a steel part is in contact with other materials. When the cadmium coating is intact, it will have a yellow appearance. When cadmium is worn away, exposing the metal underneath to the environment, a uniform reddish-brown stain often appears, which is the beginning of rust in the steel. Chromium is a protective coating which provides a smooth, wear-resistant surface that can be polished to a high luster. Chromium's continuous oxide coating protects not only itself, but the underlying metal as well. Even though very smooth, the surfaces of chromium coatings contain tiny cracks, which encourage pitting and will promote rusting of the steel underneath. Nickel plating is used for corrosion resistance, typically in a saltwater environment, and like chromium, the thickness of the coating determines the amount of protection which is given to the metal underneath. Non-destructive inspection, NDI, allows you to inspect for corrosion without doing damage to the aircraft itself. Several types of NDI are listed in your AC43-4A, and we will discuss six of them. They are visual inspection, liquid dye penetrant, magnetic particle inspection, eddy current inspection, x-ray inspection, and ultrasonic inspection. We will look at each one briefly. With visual inspection, as the name implies, you use your eyes to detect damage on a surface which could indicate corrosion. By shining a flashlight at a low angle across the surface you are inspecting, any irregularities will produce shadows. This makes your job considerably easier. Additionally, feeling the surface with your hand can also help you detect corrosion. Visual inspection is the most widely used corrosion detection technique. The basic inspection tools mentioned earlier will help you find chipped, missing, and lifted paint, which could lead to corrosion of the metal underneath, dished and popped rivets, 
which means that the dissimilar metals have fallen victim to galvanic corrosion. Skin bulges or lifted surfaces, which mean that exfoliation or intergranular corrosion has begun, and cracks in the metal, which are a sign of stress corrosion cracking. Visual inspection, when done correctly, will help you detect the majority of corrosion types with a minimum of tools. The remaining NDI methods are only performed by qualified and certified NDI personnel. Each method has limitations and requires properly calibrated equipment. The liquid dye penetrant process can locate large stress corrosion or corrosion fatigue cracks on non-porous ferrous or non-ferrous metals. Dye is applied to the metal and enters the cracks. The dye is wiped off and a developer is applied to the part which draws the dye to the surface. The area is then analyzed under a black light. This identifies any faults that might be present on the surface and as shown by the quantity of dye remaining will indicate the severity of the fault. The dye penetrant used in this technique must be completely removed because if any is left behind, it will corrode the metal. Magnetic particle inspection is used for the detection of cracks or flaws on or near the surface of iron-based metals. The metal part is magnetized and tiny magnetic particles are applied to the object. Any surface faults will create high intensity areas in the magnetic field. The magnetic particles will collect in these areas and pinpoint the location of the crack. Low frequency eddy current inspection can be used to detect thinning in multi-layered structures due to corrosion and cracks. The inspection is performed by inducing eddy currents into a part and electronically observing variations in the induced field. The character of observed field change is interpreted to determine the nature of the defective condition. Eddy current is a good means for inspection because the inspection can be performed quickly with standard equipment and will obtain a high degree of sensitivity and reliability. X-ray inspections can detect moderate to severe corrosion or cracks within the metal. Like all NDI methods, X-ray inspections require a qualified and skilled operator to obtain reliable results. Ultrasonic testing will detect exfoliation, stress corrosion cracking, and general material thinning. Ultrasonic thickness gauges will detect moderate to severe damage after the corrosion products have been removed. Non-destructive inspection is a valuable tool in the fight against corrosion. NDI will allow you to make a measurable difference in your battle to stop corrosion. Regularly scheduled inspections are imperative to detect corrosion on your aircraft. There are generally three types of corrosion inspections which can be accomplished on your aircraft daily or pre-flight inspections, routine corrosion inspections, and special corrosion inspections. During each type of inspection, you will be looking for visible signs of corrosion or corrosion products, specifically chipped or missing paint, which is exposing bare metal to the environment, bubbles in the paint, which may indicate corrosion has formed on the metal underneath, and excessive moisture or standing pools of water. As repetitive as they may become, the importance of daily and pre-flight inspections should never be forgotten. For daily and pre-flight inspections, always check engine compartments and the skin of the aircraft for missing or damaged paint and corrosion. Check all intake vents and engine frontal areas. Pay particular attention to exhaust trail areas which are extremely corrosion prone. Potential trouble spots such as bilges, wheel and wheel wells, battery compartments, and fuel cell and cavity drains are some of the areas that should be given special attention for signs of corrosion. Routine corrosion inspections are performed at times when other maintenance activities have made accessible areas of the aircraft which are not normally accessible during daily or pre-flight inspections. Routine corrosion inspections require the removal of panels, access plates, and removable skin panels to thoroughly inspect the internal portions of the aircraft. Detailed corrosion checks should be accomplished while access plates are removed and components are disconnected or out of the way. Inspect corrosion prone areas, such as around laboratories, in galleys, under floors, and in avionics, electronics, and baggage compartments. 
pay particular attention to the paint coatings and make sure they are still intact. You should also examine areas where heavy grease coatings are used as preservatives. If the coating is in question, remove it and inspect the area underneath. Special corrosion inspections are required at each overhaul, routine inspection, or when required by an airworthiness directive or recommended by a manufacturer. When corrosion is found, the quality control inspector makes an evaluation to determine the extent and types of damage sustained and then recommends a course of corrective action. The results of every corrosion inspection should then be recorded for later analysis. For extensive corrosion damage, a service difficulty or M or D report should be forwarded to the local FAA Flight Standards District Office for later analysis. If you are finding abnormal amounts of corrosion on your aircraft, your previous inspection or preventive maintenance program obviously did not do the job. Since you are the one who is most in tune with your aircraft's physical condition and operating schedule, you are most qualified to revise your corrosion program. Take the initiative to make your corrosion program one which remedies the deficiencies of your current program, but don't stop there. Address every problem your aircraft has been having and any others you think may occur in the future. An improved corrosion program will reduce both the seriousness and number of incidents of corrosion damage your aircraft sustains. Let's summarize part two. We discussed the proper tools you will need to conduct an effective inspection. We showed you how to detect the telltale signs of corrosion on common aircraft metals and paints, and what corrosion actually looks like. We briefly talked about six types of non-destructive inspections. And we went over the three kinds of corrosion inspections you should be performing on your aircraft. The material in this program has provided you with the basics you need to detect corrosion problems on your aircraft. Corrosion inspections are a key element in preventing the corrosion cancer from taking over your aircraft. By discovering corrosion problems early, you save repair time and the dollars which would have been spent unnecessarily. But most importantly, you are making your aircraft safer and more reliable.